take one. Robert, at the end of series three, thought he was entering a plateau of happiness with, with uh, the new child arriving uh, after so much family tragedy in the past. Life seemed to be on the up and they seemed to be starting a young family and things were looking good and then this terrible tragedy hit. We can only imagine his shock on discovering that the, the son that he never had and the heir that he did have has gone. And action. And series four begins with the shocking sense of Matthew's memory being extremely fresh in the minds of the grieving family. I think everybody in the house is affected by uh, Matthew's death, upstairs and downstairs. Isabel is alone. She's married into this family, but they're not her family. Life's very difficult. She is, is very much still mourning her son. So much of this series, Mary is back to the similar sort of person that she was in series one. She has this hard exterior again. Now we see her retreating back into her shell at the beginning of season four, probably to an even greater degree than she's done before. She's more buttoned up than ever. She's someone that struggles to find happiness, and she found it with Matthew, and now suddenly it's gone. I think Robert is as guilty as anyone of almost wallowing in the, in the pain of it all, but he is deeply protective of Mary and Mary's grief, and his solution is to allow her to live through it. Branson and Violet and Cora and various specific people feel it's time she rejoined the living. Carson, who has quite a part to play always in Mary's life, even he feels it's time she got back behind the wheel. He feels very sympathetic, very sorry for her, and ultimately does have to sort of challenge her to shake herself out of her mourning um, and say it's time to get back on with life. OK, rehearsing and action. Tom kind of tries to help Mary get out of, you know, this kind of self-pity and sorrow. And he uses Matthew's ideas of what he wanted to do with the estate as a way of getting her involved and trying to get her out of, of just being so sad and, and, and tries to get her to move on. We also have other things going on. We have uh, Roberts uh, has assumed the management of the estate, you know, with Matthew dead, he's the co-owner. He feels Mary's not in a position to do so emotionally, so he feels it's only right that he should. Luckily, there's Branson to, you know, keep things in check a bit and to manage the estate. He comes forward and gives something totally new to the house because he understands how agriculture works. He's bringing a comprehension of the modern view and recognising rather subtly how to bring his father-in-law along too. I think we're going to see a Robert who is going to embrace change. He actually is going to step up to the plate and say, look, you, you said to me that we, we needed to change. Well, we're going to damn well change. There is this burden of responsibility that this place has to just to keep ticking over. It has to, it has to be handed on to George in the, uh, in the best nick possible. The fate of these houses, more in the 20th century than ever before, was very, very dependent on the enthusiasm of the family and the efficiency of the family and their determination to stay there. It needed a businessman or businesswoman and, and real determination at that time. And certain people like Viola, like Branson, feel these qualities are in Mary if they can wake them up. And that's where we start.